A few days ago, Nikolai Patrushev, speaking with journalists, reiterated that Warsaw had not given up its desire to seize the western lands of this Eastern European country. Moreover, he reiterated his confidence that Poland has already launched the process of seizing the western part of Ukraine. Against this backdrop, it is worth noting that many in Russia are still confident that the capitulation of the Kiev regime and the defeat of the Ukrainian armed forces on the battlefield will provoke Poland to take decisive action regarding the western part of Ukraine. Many influential Russian telegram channels, citing their own sources in the Russian Defense Ministry, claim in all seriousness that some groups of Polish soldiers and officers are already in the territory of the Lviv region, and at the moment, it is absolutely not clear how they will behave in the event of the surrender of the Kiev authorities and the signing of a peace treaty on Russia's terms. At the same time, it is also worth noting that despite the fact that the Polish authorities call all statements about Warsaw's desire to seize the western part of Ukraine, the usual work of Russian propaganda, many independent Western experts, observing what is happening, also expressed confidence that Poland is waiting for the right moment to return its historical lands in the western part of Ukraine. For regular viewers of my channel, this is not shocking news, as I regularly discussed in many of my videos the desire of Poland to start this adventure. Moreover, back in March, I carried out an in-depth analysis of Putin's speech before the outbreak of hostilities, in which he hinted at the future division of Ukraine. However, a few curious details have been added to today's events. But before moving on to these curious details, let's answer the most exciting question. Will there be a military conflict between Poland and Russia? Taking into account the fact that even before the start of hostilities, Putin designated the western lands of Ukraine as once belonging to Poland, and thereby he made it clear that Russia has no claims to these areas. Indeed, it would be a big mistake for Russia to sacrifice the lives of soldiers in an attempt to take control of the most Russophobic and hostile to Russia part of Ukraine, which is inhabited by absolute Russophobes. And this territory itself is not of such great value to Russia as eastern Ukraine, populated mainly by Russian people. Therefore, fighting the Poles for a piece of the most Russophobic part of Ukraine simply doesn't make any sense. The Poles themselves also want to avoid a war with the Russian Federation, because in Warsaw they are well aware that being face to face with Russia, Poland will lose the war. In turn, NATO has already made it clear to Warsaw that in such cases, the alliance will not fight for the sake of Polish ambitions and desires. NATO will not expose itself to a nuclear strike from the Russian Federation. Even though Poland is a member of NATO, many experts are sure that other member countries of the alliance will not come to its aid in the event of a war between Russia and Poland. That is why the United States, from where the behavior of Polish politicians is controlled, doesn't want a conflict between Poland and Russia. Washington understands that NATO will never start a third world war with Russia over Poland. So, even before the start of hostilities in Ukraine, neither the United States nor Poland plan to fight with Russia. Given all this, we can conclude that Poland began the seizure of western Ukraine with the tacit consent of Moscow. The fact is, that it is beneficial for Russia if the Poles take the bait and begin the process of returning their historical lands located in the western part of Ukraine. A big plus for Russia is that the Poles will complete the process of the denazification of Ukraine, initiated by the Russians, but at their own expense and, possibly, at the cost of the lives of Polish soldiers. As a result, Ukraine will completely lose its statehood. In addition, the western part of Ukraine will require huge investments in the restoration of the economy and infrastructure. If Poland takes the western part of Ukraine, then Warsaw will have to invest in the restoration of this region. However, unfortunately for the Poles, Poland is now in an economic crisis. The country is experiencing record inflation over the past 24 years. In Poland, the price of fuel especially increased by 35.4% and energy by 31.4%. This directly affects the interests of ordinary Polish citizens, who absolutely don't need this Western Ukraine and Ukrainian refugees. Compared to the Western part, the eastern part of Ukraine is much more valuable. The port of Mariupol, the agrarians of the Kherson region, and the ports of the Black Sea have already begun to benefit Russia. Unfortunately for Poland, Warsaw will get no economic benefit from western Ukraine, only problems. 
In Poland, prices will rise even more, as Warsaw will have to spend money on rebuilding acquired territories, which are absolutely useless from an economic point of view. Another problem that Poland will face is the clash of Ukrainian and Polish interests. After the annexation of the western part of Ukraine to Poland, Warsaw will want to carry out restitution. The return to the Poles of objects, houses, and apartments that previously belonged to them. It will lead to sharp discontent and a wave of indignation among Ukrainians. Then, it will be further intensified by Polish and Ukrainian nationalism. After all, the Ukrainian Nazis have not gone anywhere yet. They will not like that the Poles can not only take away objects, houses, or businesses from them, but also the territory of Ukraine, which can simply become part of Poland. And as a result, a conflict will break out between Polish and Ukrainian nationalists. Therefore, against the backdrop of the problems that the Poles will receive after the annexation of the western lands of Ukraine, Russia should limit the supply of energy resources to Poland as much as possible and close its market to Polish goods. These actions will help Moscow to increase the problems in the Polish economy and, if possible, bring it down into the abyss. After acquiring such a headache as western Ukraine, Poland becomes even more vulnerable. The huge costs of the weak Polish economy to western Ukraine will lead to the fact that Warsaw will sharply decrease its ability to maintain a well-armed army. This fact is quite satisfactory for Russia, which will feel quite calm in its future new borders. That is why Moscow will not interfere with the Poles in acquiring such pain in the butt as western Ukraine.